Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new video. Welcome to a new shortlist for the 2022 Nevada Senate race. And before you ask, no, Jackie Rosen isn't on this fucking list. She's not a good candidate compared to the other five Democrats on here. So let's get straight on to it with our number 10 spot, and it's going to be a Republican. And that's John Lee, the former mayor of North Las Vegas. He's also a former state senator and state congressman, so he has a storied career in Nevada politics. Um, some pros about this guy, he's a former Democrat. That's also a con. He could, you know, went over some moderate Democrat voters who, you know, don't like the whole Biden economics thing. Because apparently uh, there are a lot of uh, Democrat strategists who think that's backfiring. And honestly, I think the odds are 50-50. You know, like everything in politics right now. God, I'm not excited about my final 2024 prediction because I'm cursed. Anyway, uh, also cons. He's a former Democrat because, you know, that could alienate some Republican voters who, you know, would who would have voted for this guy if it wasn't for the, you know, he's a former Democrat. Back to the pros. He is the mayor of the largest city in Nevada, you know, the northern portion of it, because for some reason, like Las Vegas is divided into like North Las Vegas, South Las Vegas, and then Las Vegas as a whole. It's weird. Also, he's pro-worker. He has established multiple pro-worker initiatives as the mayor of North Las Vegas. You know, he has increased wages, of course, you know, union worker protections and all that fun stuff. Business was booming in his portion of the city during COVID because of this. Also, he's loud as hell when it comes to, like, the woke issue. Think like Ron DeSantis loud. He's a bit, he's as loud, if not louder than that, than Ron DeSantis when it comes to that issue. Also, that's also a con, because we see how Ron DeSantis is doing right now in the uh, Republican primary. Um, and I think the biggest con, honestly, there is no debate here that this is fucking huge. He has had allegations in the, pa allegations in the past of child pornography on his laptop. However, after months of investigation, the FBI dropped the investigation due to a lack of evidence. So, like, I... I think this was like, it started off as a Hunter Biden thing where someone got a hold of his laptop and, you know, claimed there was, you know, child pornography on there. He was very much, you know, willing to listen to whatever he needed to do. He was very, what's the word? He worked with the FBI to see what he needs to do. Like, if they asked him to hand over anything, he handed it over as if he had nothing to hide. So I think that might be the biggest, you know, green flag or red flag. So. Again, but the fact is, he was still, you know, accused of it. That's going to hurt his potential campaign. But it's still sad that he's the fifth strongest Democrat or Republican on this list. So now we go on to our number five Democrat, or she's an independent, but she's Democrat aligned. Uh, the, our no, number nine is Hillary Shiv, the independent mayor of Reno, Nevada. She is, of course, an independent. That's also a con, by the way. She could appeal to a vast number of voters at the same time. She could alienate a vast number of voters just because she is independent aligned. Just look at Bernie Sanders and Angus King. You gotta, you know, Bernie Sanders alienates, you know. Well, I can't say Bernie Sanders alienates because he's super fucking popular, so don't listen to what the fuck I'm saying. Look at Kirsten Cinema. Much better comparison. Uh, she is the mayor of the largest city in Washoe County, which, you know, is a county that Democrats need to win if you want to win statewide in Nevada. And even then, it's not guaranteed. Look at Steve Sisolak back in 2022. He won Washoe County and still lost. Or look at 2016 when Catherine Cortez Mosto lost Washoe and still won. So it's not always guaranteed, but it's always nice to have Washoe County in your corner during an election for a Democrat. Hell, even for a Republican. Uh, even though she's not, you know, one of the richest people in the country or even in the state of Nevada, she has a history of philanthropy. You know, she is an activist for organ donor awareness, and she even donated a kidney to someone, which, you know, that's a good thing. That's, you know, people will like that about her. Uh, Con, she's very divisive. I don't know how many times I read about her doing something that pissed off, you know, the right wing of Nevada, or just the right wing in general. She replaced the U.S. flag with the LGBT flag, which you know how people get with stuff like that. It's just, oof. However, this is probably her biggest downfall, and that's the fact that she has a history of putting Reno in debt. She overspends every single year by billions of dollars to the point where uh, Steve Sislak had to, you know, bail out Washoe County. Or not even Washoe, just Reno in general in his budgets. 
which is probably one of the major reasons why he lost to Lombardo, because he had to keep, you know, helping her out. Of course, she's not, you know, the center of attention, but, you know, the budget had portions of spending in there for Reno because of her. So that is a big con in general. Of course, she is an independent, so if she would need to get, like, the Democrats' permission, like Bernie Sanders did when he asked her for president. Uh, next up, we have Bob Beers, a Republican, the number eight on this spot, and the number four strongest Republican, is a former Las Vegas City Councilman. Pros, he is, he was elected from Las Vegas. He was, which is a area that, you know, you need to be from Clark County to win as a Republican. I think Joe Lombardo proved that. Uh, he has defeated incumbents in the primary before, which, you know, says a lot about his electability statewide, or at least in certain areas in the state, like Las Vegas. He's a populist on economics, you know, pro-worker, protectionist, you know, he's against tax increases, which the current governor at the time, I think he pronounced his name as Kenny Guin. Um, we'll get back to Kenny Guin here in a second, but, you know, he was in, you proposing a $1.8 billion tax increase for the state of Nevada, and Bob Beers, and you had this huge block of Republicans, and even some Democrats who were vastly opposing to it was loud as hell he opposed his party establishment similar to matt gates would like very loudly which again opposing opposing your party establishment like loudly when you're compared to matt gates could hurt you could alienate moderate voters could alienate funding from big donors so you need to be careful with bob beers even though i like bob beers a lot uh, again he's not the strongest republican on this list. Uh, speaking of, we're going on to our number seven spot, our number three Republican, Mark Amade. He is a current U.S. congressman. He's also the former chair of the Nevada Republican Party. Some pros about him, he outperforms the national average every single time in Washoe County. That says Reno County, so say Washoe County. He wins the county by double digits or close to it. I think the last time he didn't win Washoe County by double digits was 2018, and fair. It was a D plus nine, D plus nine national environment and he still ended up winning the county by like four so that's pretty good he's vaguely pro-worker like he's supported union protections but at the same time he supported tax increases remember that 1.8 billion dollar tax increase he, you know he gave a counter offer of 898 mi uh, million instead but that's still a tax increase, which is a con, by the way. He does support a private universal health care system, which is something I personally ad advocate for, as well as Donald Trump back in 2015. If you watch, I think, the first Republican primary, they talked about that, where he's like, he wants a private system that's, you know, similar to a universal health care system. That's what I support. He's also moderate on the LGBT issues. When I mean moderate, he supports, you know, banning discrimination against them, but not marriage for them. It's weird. Uh, he also voted to certify the 2020 election, which, hey, that is a good thing, right? You know, Ron, like Mandela Barnes didn't try to use it against Ron Johnson. He was like, bro, I certified that election. And if Jackie Rosen or any other Democrat tries to do that against Mark Amadai, he can just do the same thing. He's got the optics with him. He voted to certify in both Arizona and Pennsylvania. Cons, he could alienate right wing and far right Republicans. That's always a big deal when it comes to Mark Amadai. He is typically a issue of a primary challenge very minor however donald trump does endorse the guy occasionally not every single time he endorsed him in 2018 and 2020 did not endorse him in 2022 but i think he endorsed him for 2024 i could be wrong uh he also again as we said earlier he has a history of supporting tax increases as well as modern on the lgbt issue which again could just further alienate those right wing and far right voters heading into our number i believe for Democrat, and our number six uh, candidate is James Gibson, the Clark County Commission Chairman, and he's also the former mayor of Henderson, Nevada, which is in Clark County. We're talking about Clark and Washoe a lot, aren't we? Yes, we are. He, pros. Also, this guy is a blue dog Democrat, by the way. He is a conservative on a lot of issues, moderate on others. I don't know a lot where he's liberal on. I, I think the uh, worker thing he's liberal on, but that's about it. Uh, he has he's he's got evangelical appeal, which is typically something evangelicals typically support Republicans. However, he's a very religious man. He has that appeal to these that voter group, as you know, if you just look at you know where he's successful at when he's 
running for election. He typically wins by large margins, typically due to religious voters. Again, he has GOP voter appeal, not just ancestral Democrats, but just GOP voters in general. They like him because he's a conservative. Think Jared Golden up in Maine. He has ancestral Democrat appeal. Think Jared Golden up in Maine. Cons, his Hispanic appeal is untested. You know, if Hispanics typically are more northern Nevada, closer to Washoe than they are Las Vegas there, you'll see more black voters in, st in Clark County. Also, he's too conservative for, for, for progressives. And if progressives are, you know, the majority of Democrat voters in the state of Nevada, that could really hurt his chances at a victory if he doesn't want enough independent voters. So James Gibson, pretty solid candidate. But let's go into our number five candidate, which is also our number three Democrat, and that's going to be Ross Miller, also a Clark County commissioner and the former Secretary of State of Nevada. Pros about him. This guy, I couldn't find any cons for. I, like, I'm sure he has them. I couldn't find him. I spent close to 20 to 30 minutes looking. I couldn't find him. Also, the final pro is also just a, a, a tad bit joke, because I thought it was interesting. Pros, he holds the record for being the youngest statewide office holder, which, let's be honest, that is a strong test to your electability. And the fact is, he's very left-wing, which, you know, he appeals to all wings of the Democrat Party, whether you're progressive, moderate, you like the guy. He is pretty much your all-rounder Democrat, which, honestly, I am expecting this guy to run for statewide office again in 2026, probably against Joe Lombardo. That would be interesting. Also, he's a former MMA fighter. That's enough of him. Let's go on to our number four candidate, which is also our number two Democrat, that being Stephen Klubeck. You guys might know that I like this guy a lot. He's a Democrat mega donor, but he's also a left-wing nationalist, which is something you don't typically see. However, if you are a left-wing nationalist, you are probably going to hate the party establishment to a fucking T. Look at RFK Jr. and Tulsi Gabbard. They are left-wing nationalists, and Jesus Christ, RFK Jr. is running as an independent. I can't believe it. Anyway, he has crossover appeal. He pretty much, if like, he has appeal from both the Republican and Libertarian parties, which is something that, even though the Libertarian Party isn't a strong presence in Nevada, at least not that much, if you were to be able to win over Libertarian voters, that's still 1%, 2 3% of the vote that's going in your corner. Also, he's a philanthropist. He has a history of philanthropy, which only makes independents like you more. Cons, he has donated to Republicans in the past, which you might think, whoa, that just means he has more Republican appeal. Yeah, but that also means that hardcore Democrats probably aren't going to vote for him. They just might leave the ballot, that portion of the ballot blank, or they'll vote third party. Hell, they might even vote for the Republican, which is very unlikely. And if they did, very un uh, ironic. Also, he's pro-wealthy, and what I mean by that, he has threatened Democrat leaders from not using the term billionaire anymore. Very petty on that for some reason. He's against wealth taxes. He's against the whole socialist and progressive ideals. He will not... In he endorsed Dean Heller over Jackie Rosen because Dean Heller convinced him she was like this hardcore socialist. That's how much he hates them. So, again, he's going to alienate progressives like a bitch. Uh, however, I think independents would, you know, make up for it if, you know, Republicans don't nominate the top two that are above him. Speaking of, let's go to our number three candidate and our number two Republican, that being Joe Lombardo, the governor of Nevada and the former sheriff of Clark County. You'll love to see a sheriff get elected to statewide office. Pros, the guy is super popular. I think the guy's got like a 54, 55% approval rating last time I checked. He is a former sheriff, which as of right now, if you are a former sheriff, you are probably going to do extremely well with voters. That's just how the state of things are right now. During the whole... George Floyd race riots, he was very tough on rioting, which, you know, Las Vegas was never this epicenter of, you know, rioting like Minneapolis or Portland was. It was because Joe Lombardo was a sheriff. He did not take kindly to that shit. He's also very pro-worker, has implemented both wage increases as well as protections for workers as the governor of Nevada. He is also pro-police. I don't think I need to explain why. Um, he supports public education funding. I believe I posted something about that on my community post when he started being governor. And a lot of Democrats were surprised he was going to implement that. And I was like, really? Also, he's moderate on abortion. There are now three governors in the country currently who have implemented policies that you would say is pro-choice. That being Phil Scott, Chris Sununu, and now Joe Lombardo. 
Uh, he's also pro LGBT. You know, he supports you know gay marriage and all that. However, he did ban gender transitions for minors, which you know Democrats are going to say something about that, even though it's a losing issue for them. Uh, cons: He's seen as weak on medical freedom. Of course, when he entered governor, the governor's mansion, he really didn't do anything for the whole COVID vaccine mandates. He got rid of the mask mandates, but that's about it. The ma vaccine mandates are still there. He supports the death penalty in a country and a state where the death penalty is becoming more and more unpopular. And again, cons, he's a moderate on abortion. That could alienate right-wing and far-right voters from voting for him. They might vote Libertarian or for the Constitution Party nominee. Is the Constitution Party a party in Nevada that gets support? Probably not. Um, next up, the number two candidate. Yes, number two. This guy is number two. But the number one Republican, Brian Sandoval. Now, you might be asking, why the hell is he the number two candidate? I'll explain why in a second. He is currently the uh, president for the University of Reno, Nevada. He's the former governor of Nevada. He has a strong Hispanic appeal, strong ancestral Republican appeal. He is super popular. This one shocked me when I was making this, you know, the, all the pros. He is tough on violent crime, let me fucking tell you. Like, he's more tough than, like, right-wing Republicans are. Like, he passed legislation that prevented, you know, people who assaulted people that fought back. Like, let's say I were to go up and stab someone. Holy hell, maybe I shouldn't have used this. Too late, I'm in too deep. And then someone beat the hell out of me in response. I can't sue him for beating the fuck out of me because I stabbed him. That's what was passed under Sandoval. I think it's called, um, Stand Your Ground. Like, you think Florida's Stand Your Ground is tough? Nevada's is tougher, and that's because of Sandoval. Like, holy hell. Uh, this is actually something that I love a lot about Brian Sandoval, and that he has turned down multiple pay rises as governor. I think there was a initiative for a pay rise for governor, government workers, including the governor, six times during his eight years, and he turned down every single one. I love that. Politicians don't need to make more money. Also, I don't think this needs to be said, but he is a strong suburb appeal. I think the strongest of Republican suburb appeal you can think uh, cons about him. This is ironic, considering he's the president of a university. He has cut funding in education, both public and private, during his first three years as governor. He is pro-choice. That could be a pro, by the way. I'll leave that up to you. He supports Obamacare. We all know how much Obamacare was a failure, right? Okay, good. Also, he will alienate the Trump base. Like, there is no doubt about it. Like, this guy has a chance to lose because he will alienate the Trump base. There, <laughs> There's literally none, especially if Trump pulls a what he did to Joe O'Day and tells people not to vote for him. Like, there's a chance he could lose, but at the same time, independents could make up for it because he will win them no matter what. Unless we go to our number one candidate, the number one Democrat. Now, we, <laughs> I guarantee you, I, I can't wait to see the comments of this video. But the number one candidate and the number one Democrat that I believe would actually beat Brian Sandoval is Oscar Goodman. An independent, a Democrat turned independent, the former mayor of Las Vegas. The pro is an independent. Again, that's also a con. The dude is super fucking popular in Las Vegas. Like, if he were to run against... It, let's say Jeffrey Gunther, who is, I think, the leading Republican right now to a lot of people. Goodman would probably win by like seven, if not double digits, because of his appeal to Las Vegas. He's like a... He's a figurehead of some sort. Like, people... I don't want to say praise him. He's like what Trump is to the Republicans. That's what he is to Las Vegas. Also, he has a strong libertarian appeal for some reason. Libertarians love this guy. Probably because he's very pro-choice, you know, pro-drug, drug decriminalization, let me just say that. Very small government. He supports legalizing prostitution. That's a con, by the way. Um, he was elected in the largest city in Nevada. That's a pro. Um, cons about this guy, um, I think the biggest one is that he underwent several ethics investigations many, many times for different reasons. All of which were small. They honestly looked more like witch hunts to me. Um, which is a bit, you know. Also, he's old. I think that's another con. He's 84 years old right now, which it could hurt him, but I think he is the strongest candidate, you know, for this race. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This is the Chaotic One saying, peace.